put this on the screen, uh, the beamer. Ah, yes. Welcome at this presentation about, I'm very curious. There's no, no light yet. Yes, please. Great. Welcome at this presentation about uh, stroopwafels and Raspberry Pi. Um, of course, you all know that uh, it's not about real stroopwafels like these, but about Joomla, and not about Raspberry Pi, but about Raspberry Pi. It's uh, this small fellow. Um, this is what I want to tell today. I will start with uh, a quick ov uh, small overview about the Raspberry Pi and then I will tell you something about how to install all, all this stuff just to make uh, a website available on it. Uh, Joomla website of course. <coughs> the Raspberry Pi is not really fast so I will end up I will end with uh, performance and also with a couple of things about security. The geeky stuff didn't really turn out, so it will be really short what I wanted to do. Um, so, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, are there any people here in the audience who have a Raspberry Pi? Okay, that's really a lot. <laughs> so, you probably know the background of this Raspberry Pi. Um, there were a couple of people in uh, England, and they noticed that uh, today's engineers, they have, an ac have a past uh, with computer, home computers. Their first computers where they learned to program were home computers and they created real small programs. The youth of today, um, they still have computer classes at school, but those computer classes are about how to operate software, how PowerPoint uh, works, how MS Word works, how to click and how to swipe. So they thought, well, th maybe there's a sort of gap. So let's try to find a machine that is really easy um, to install, to use for multi-purposes, but also uh, which is good for education. <coughs> they started selling this stuff uh, in February last year. Their target was 5,000 of these computers in a year. They did not really succeed because it became 1 million in a year. The benefits of this Raspberry Pi <coughs> It's tiny, really, really small. It's cheap. Um, it doesn't use much power. Uh, it's very silent because there is no hard drive in it. It's just an SD card. And it's a bit of a standard because there is much documentation about Linux and also about the Raspberry Pi. And well, there's many software available, but also hardware. So if you look at this Raspberry Pi, uh, it's a single board computer. It's, uh, it's 700 megahertz the speed, but you can overclock it if you like to 1000 megahertz. It's not really fast, but it's possible. My version has uh, 256 mega, uh, megabyte. Currently, if you sell one, I, I mean if you buy one, it's uh, the double the, um, the RAM. You can use it on a television using HDMI, but what I use with my Raspberry Pi is only the SD card for the operating system, the uh, USB here to uh, power the power, give it power, and also um, the Ethernet to uh, connect it to my uh, local area network. There's a large community around this Raspberry Pi. This community is about how to use this Raspberry Pi, but also how how the software works and also uh, they exchange software, they create software just like Joomla. Um, the same with hardware and, and also software, uh, the case. I mean, if you buy this Raspberry Pi, it's just like this. It's nice, it works okay. You can put it somewhere, but if you shortcut the, 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 the how do you say it? The bottom of this, uh, this stuff, well, you can throw it away. So you have to create a case. 
this case was made by a 10 year old German girl and she also created uh, a how to build this stuff and she put it on the internet. So she made an open source case. <laughs> However, <laughs> um, it's already done, so I, don't, I didn't like to do it. I have two children, they are young, and even this young that I was able to get this of them. It's Duplo, it's for toddlers, Lego for toddlers. So what I did was I just created my own case. Um, my case has something special which uh, all the other cases don't. Mine has a built-in alarm. <laughs> <laughs> if you build a case like this, well, you know, the Raspberry Pi is not really, uh, not really um, <coughs> fast. So I have to do something about the performance. So, <coughs> however, uh, I will also tell something about security. <laughs> because I'm absolutely sure that you don't want stuff like this on it. Um, something I have never seen before, minus. My case is mobile. <laughs> anyway, um, when you install Joomla, I'm when, to when you want to install Joomla or when you want to use this case, this computer, you have to install uh, an operating system. And with Joomla, you have to install a so-called LAMP stack. Um, I tried it. I didn't like Apache, so I got rid of Apache and started with Nginx. Uh, so mine is not using a lamp, but a la lamp stack. And first of all, the operating system. Um, I use Raspbian. It's uh, a Debian Linux optimized for the Raspberry Pi. And these are the steps you have to take if you want to use your uh, Raspberry Pi in a network. First of all, you have to install ra the, the Raspberry Pi image download it from the official website. Uh, the current release is from February, and if you unzip it, it, is, uh, it will be uh, about two, uh, two gigabytes. The minimum specification of the SD card is two gigabytes, but I recommend to use four or eight. Um, when you have this card, you uh, have to put this image on the card, and uh, you could do it with a command called dd. Be really very careful with this, because some people call it data or disk destroyer. Um, you don't have to format your uh, SD card. You can just put it in your Apple or Windows or Linux computer. And with DMesh, you can find out the address of this card. I mean, how to uh, put information on it. So with DMesh, I found out my card is like this. This is the name of my card. So. I use this in this statement. First of all, uh, sudo dd of disk uh, dump. Uh, I take blocks of one megabyte. Uh, input file is this image I downloaded and unzipped. And this is the target. For Mac and Windows, you do something similar. Um, this is what you do. It takes about four and a half minutes. And I end it with sudo sync. So if there is still someone, some, uh, something in memory, uh, it will put on the it will be put on the disk and then you can turn it off. So then you can put your Raspberry Pi in your local area network. Mm. But there my trouble started. Um, I had this. You need uh, one amp uh, and five volt. So I bought this plug, and it was one amp. They said. <coughs> I bought the cable, USB to micro USB and it's really short, it's nice. However, um, when I tried to use this on my Raspberry Pi, it was really unstable. Sometimes it just went off, sometimes the network uh, lights didn't come on. So I bought a new adapter, <coughs> same problems. So I was thinking, uh, so I changed this one, this cable, and the cable, bla uh, it seemed to be funky. I mean. Uh, there's probably a lot of resistance on it, so you don't get the one amp or maybe 
half amp on your Raspberry Pi. So if you have problems, also take into account USB uh, plugs, uh, cables. Um, if you connect it to your, res uh, to your network, you have to find the IP, IP address of this machine. You can use a phone, an Android, or maybe uh, an Apple iPhone. <coughs> There's a program called Overlook Thing. If you are connected to the network, you can see all the networks, all the IP addresses in your network. However, if you go abroad, uh, at customs they might do, uh, they might be difficult because they see this as a hacker tool. You can also use another thing like uh, Nmap. You do it twice, um, and first you do it before you connect your Raspberry Pi, and after half a minute you do it an another time, and then you see a new um, IP address in in this range, and you can use it to connect to the Raspberry Pi. So you have to log in into the Raspberry Pi. Um, first of all, who doesn't use Linux in this room? Okay. Uh, if you see uh, a dollar sign, it means you are logged in or you are doing something as a regular user. When it's not a dollar sign but um, a hashtag, you are the root user and then you can do anything. Um, so I look as a normal user. This is my, um, uh, how do you say it, command line. Uh, on Windows you have terminal. Um, I mean um, OS X terminal and on Windows you have putty. You do something like pi and then the IP, add IP address with SSH in front of it and you connect to your Raspberry Pi. The username is Raspberry <coughs> and then you should get a screen like this. It's som somewhat longer but I cut something off otherwise it was not able to see. Um, they recommend please run sudo config. So that's what I did. Uh, you get the screen and you have all the options to configure stuff. But I only configured two things because the other things I like to do on the command line. So first of all, the expand root fs. My Raspberry Pi image was about uh, two gigabyte. I use uh, an SD card of eight gigabyte. So if you put a two gigabyte image on a eight gigabyte uh, SD card, you lose six gigabyte, and with this command, uh, you expand your Raspberry Pi image to eight gigabyte. Um, you can use your Raspberry Pi on a, a television, and then you have a graphical card. I mean, the, the GPU. You need a graphical card, and the graphic card, the GPU, it uses RAM. But as I don't use my uh, lit a computer for uh, the television, I just turn it off. I mean, I shrank it from uh, 64 to, to 16. Then I rebooted my machine, and now it's time for other things, like updating it. First of all, um, with Linux, you have a repository of software somewhere. When you want to update the software, you first have to synchronize the database on your uh, own machine with the database on the server. So you can do stuff like uh, updating, I mean upgrading. So this will update uh, your Raspberry Pi with only the information about what's the current software. And with upgrade, you can it will upgrade the software, but it will take about 22 minutes if you have a fast internet connection. <coughs> so if you want to experiment with this Raspberry Pi, you don't want to do this every time something goes wrong. So maybe a backup is a good idea. With this command, you can shut it down, but you can also do sudo halt, it's even faster. Remove it, do uh, the DD, uh, this dump, but then uh, uh, in another way. And then it will create an image on your computer uh, from your uh, SD card. Um, I don't like uh, the Pi at Raspberry Pi because I have really s little uh, uh, room here for my sheets. And I change it to RPI by opening a configuration file. On Linux, the configuration files are all in e ATC. So in hostname, I changed Raspberry Pi to RPI. I changed the uh, host file, and this is on purpose the one. It's not. Uh, 127001, but really with 11. <coughs> and I uh, changed it to RPI. 
I rebooted my uh, hostname process, and then I think I logged out and logged in again, and then I was pi at RPI. Um, yeah? Why is it uh, one, one? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, but it is no mistake. So, yeah, I have to, to look that up. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so the thing I wanted to do was um, I wanted to change uh, my username. I don't like Pi because that's a security risk. And I wanted to make it Peter, which is will be a security risk uh, later on. But anyway, <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, <laughs> also and also my domain name is PeterMartin.nl. Um, so this is what I did to um, create a password for the root account. I used, uh, I logged out and I used in, I logged in as user and now you see my uh, regular uh, user uh, dollar sign became um, the, the hashtag. And I just did two commands. The one I changed the pi, uh, pi to Peter and the other one I created a own home directory for my files. I used another uh, terminal session just to log in and try if I could update stuff and it, it was okay. So I, kn I knew that it worked. So I logged out and I did sudo password L. I just uh, got rid of the root user again because root on, s on a computer like this is problems. I changed the, uh, the configuration for uh, the time zone. And then now it starts to get a uh, knife. I mean, uh, interesting. First of all, uh, you have um, probably a router like this. Um, if you connect your Raspberry Pi, you will probably have a co normal computer, but you can also uh, use another port for your Raspberry Pi. But you want to uh, have the, the internet, people on the internet, access your Raspberry Pi, so you have to do stuff within this machine. Um, first of all, uh, I, you have to know your IP address, your external IP address. It's uh, the one your um, hosting provider gives you, uh, or internet provider gives you. Uh, I wanted to uh, have uh, PeterMartin.nl uh, refer to my IP address, and I have to do something with my Raspberry Pi because now, at the moment, I have a dynamic IP address, which can be really inconvenient when you uh, reboot it, and maybe someone else uses the IP address in the meantime. I want to have it sta to, to have it static. So first of all, I went to whatsmyip.org to get my IP address. For instance, one two three four. I went to my uh, domain register, and I changed the DNS settings for my domain name to. Uh, I uh, added an A record which pointed to my internet uh, router. And I, in my internet router, I, I, which is the IP, this IP address, I went to my internet router, I used the GUI, and I changed uh, some stuff in it, which I will show in the next sheet. I'm a Raspberry Pi. I will change the IP address to 09 at the end. So this is what I did in my, uh, uh, my modem. Um, it, uh, I configured three different ports. I want to have people uh, ha uh, to have access using SSH to my uh, Raspberry Pi to use uh, it at the web server port, but also SSL in case. And I changed uh, my Raspberry Pi, I gave it a static IP. This is what I did. First of all, route. With route, you get some information like the gateway and the uh, uh, net mask and in the configuration file of the network is it says interfaces and I opened it and changed DHCP for static and this is what I did to give it a uh, static internet address uh, and these things were also uh, I also changed the net mask and gateway so I rebooted it and then I was able to do something with nginx um, who, kn who doesn't know nginx Okay, okay, cool. Um, Nginx. This morning I attended a session by uh, Marion and Tech. Yeah, the two of SiteGround. And it was a r very nice technical uh, presentation about um, two things uh, uh, about optimization, but also about web server optimization with Nginx. Uh, Nginx, it's 
fast for dynamic pages, but for static pages, it's very, very fast. Uh, this is why I used it, because of the low memory, but also because of the high performance. And I found it easy to configure. And if you look at the um, statistics, well, first of all, you shouldn't trust statistics because you, you can use statistics in any way. But if you look at the statistics, uh, more than a hundred million people, a uh, million sites are using Nginx already. 15.5% of all the sites use Apache, I mean uh, Nginx. And it's number two when you look at the most busiest websites. So, uh, a couple of names who use Nginx. Well, these are the big boys, and this is just me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Facebook, GitHub, well, all those large companies use Nginx for their server. If you have a web browser and you have Web Developer Toolbar installed, you can say server response, and then you can see that it says Nginx. So you know that they use Nginx. To install it, well, it's the same procedure. Uh, use sudo. Uh, to uh, run commands that are only available for a root user, and then at get install nginx. Uh, you get some messages, I just said yes, and it was installed. But then you have to configure it. The first thing you have to do, the Raspberry Pi has one CPU, and um, by default it says worker processes is two, or maybe four, I don't know but you have to change it to the amount of CPU you have in your machine. In this case, so it's one. So I changed it in this configuration file. I restart, I started Nginx, and then I was able to go with my web browser to the website, to this IP address, and it says, welcome to Nginx. You probably know, welcome to uh, Apache, or something like, or it works, it says, I think. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you have to take four steps to get uh, a virtual domain on your website. First of all, we have to create a location. In this case, I was used to Apache, so I like the www, uh, I mean far dot slash www convention, and I created a directory called petermartin.nl. And you have to create a configuration file. In this case, uh, it's also again in the ATC, etc. Sites available, and there I created a file called petermartin.nl. Uh, you have to create a symbolic link, and you have to reload Nginx. So, first step, I created with nano, it's a sort of editor, I created uh, a file called uh, uh, index.html. This is the information I put in it, just HTML. I created um, a virtual domain in the sites available, and called it petermartin.nl. And here uh, is something called a JSON. This is JSON style. You have these kinds of blocks. So the first block is a server block. And in the server block, you have another block called location. But the server block, here you specify to which port uh, your server listens. So it's port 80. These are the websites I listen to. So if you uh, put, uh, say, petermartin.nl, it should uh, go uh, to this route to this directory. I created uh, two lines to create access and log, uh, error log files. And location means um, if nothing is behind the URL, uh, you should open one of those files. Next, I should make it available. So I created a symbolic link by this command. And a symbolic link will be created in the sites enabled. After that, I reloaded the configuration file. And if everything goes okay, you say, uh, it will say reloading Nginx configuration Nginx. Um, if it works, you will get something like this. this. If it doesn't work, go to the log files, to the error log, and look at the errors, and use Google. Um, this is what I did a lot. <laughs> My SQL, the second step, this is on the server. Uh, there is no SQL Lite driver, so you have to use MySQL or maybe Postgres, but I don't know how to. So I installed MySQL, and when you install MySQL, you should use this command to make it secure, otherwise a default user will be used. Again, sudo apt-get install MySQL server, and then 
uh, this command to make it secure. That's it. PHP. This is more difficult because um, it's a bit difficult. Uh, it's a bit different with Nginx. First of all, um, we have to install two packages, PHP 5 FPM and PHP 5 MySQL. Th this MySQL file uh, will uh, build a bridge or a sort of connection between PHP and MySQL. And the FPM, it will run as a daemon and it will, uh, uh, how do you say it, parse your PHP files. I also, usually, I also install the CLI and C URL. CLI because I want to run PHP on the command line, but here with Joomla I didn't use it. This is the command. In this case, uh, FPM uh, will be started after installation, so it says OK if everything goes OK. And then um, you have to create uh, a small line um, in order to uh, tell your server that PHP files should be parsed by. Uh, PHP uh, 5 FPM. So this is uh, a small block of information. I just added in my configura configuration file. To test, create a file which you use, uh, which you name uh, PHP info and just uh, open it in your browser. If it works okay, you see this uh, configuration uh, screen of PHP, uh, of PHP. Well, my admin. Um, some people use the command line to use my SQL. Um, I'm not that uh, handy yet, so I use uh, still use PHP my admin. If you have multiple domains, virtual domains, only install it in one of the virtual domains and limit it to your IP address. Otherwise, uh, people try to uh, hack it. Uh, again, same procedure: app get install PHP my admin. A couple of questions. That's it. But you have to make it available uh, on your web server. So in the site available, go again to your uh, configuration file. Just copy and paste this text. Um, here it says uh, the root is USR share. So your PHP my admin files won't be in your uh, far uh, www, but uh, in another uh, on another place. And uh, yeah, here also they will be uh, parsed by the PHP. Um, inside, oh yeah, this is what you can do to uh, limit it to one website or one IP address. And that's it. Are there any questions yet? I presume you should install Apache. Yeah, <laughs> Apache will run, but uh, I, I decided to use this one. Yes? Uh, I don't know. Um, anyway, Joomla. Uh, I have. Uh, I can install Joomla, but I have to choose a version. I can use uh, version 1.5, or 2.5, or 3.1. Is anyone still using 1.5? You are the only one. You too. You too. And who else is still using it for clients and uh, doing stuff with it for clients? Okay. Here you are. <laughs> I hope uh, you can use it. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <coughs> I used uh, uh, 3.1 for this website. Um, and I used uh, wget. Um, I first created uh, a database for my website using uh, PHP my admin. And then I started Joomla's web installer. So first of all, I went to my uh, web um, uh, folder. I used wget. This I didn't type this. I just copied it from uh, Joomla's website, and then uh, sudo unzip to unzip it in this folder. Uh, just this regular Joomla stuff. You all do this every day, eh? and you all see this configuration writable only if you have a bad host, or if you do it in your Raspberry Pi and you didn't set the permissions. So what you can do is just copy uh, the configuration at the end and uh, paste it in the configuration or immediately solve the problems by um, changing the uh, permissions. Um, something else, 
HT Access won't work on Nginx, and you use HT Access to change the URL uh, to get uh, search engine friendly URLs. But Nginx has another thing. You can use this statement, try files, you put it in your server block, and then it will uh, have search engine friendly URLs. So uh, open your configuration file again, put this file just below the index so that everything will be uh, uh, made nice, nice URLs. Um, of course, you always have to restart or reload your configuration file, otherwise it won't work. Okay, next. Um, performance. I told you that my Raspberry Pi is not really, really fast. So um, I had to do some stuff to make it f somewhat faster. This morning, uh, with this presentation uh, of the uh, guys of um, this web hosting company, um, let me see, uh, SiteGround, yes, um, uh, they showed me a lot of things and I had to change my sheet a bit. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, um, performance is very, very important. You have visitors, they will walk away if, you, if, you, if it takes 10 seconds or so, but also uh, indexing. Uh, it needs to be fast. So what I did is I changed, I, I tested uh, different configurations, different server settings, different Joomla settings, some extensions, etc. There are a couple of different kinds of uh, uh, methods how to check the web speed. I used uh, Joomla's debug uh, information. So in global configuration, I put debug on, and on every page I have this. Um, but you can also use y slow, but I prefer this one. It's not really scientifically uh, correct, I think, but it gives you an indication. So this is a Joomla page. Uh, everything which is loaded, and then after 2.8 seconds, your website is loaded. Is it fast, 2.8 seconds? No? Okay. So first of all, Nginx with this F PHP FPM uh, add-on. You, ha you have a choice. You can choose between using uh, this statement, like uh, it's for a socket, so you will use win the, the Unix socket, or you can use an IP address with a port, so that your uh, PHP FPM listens to a port. If you have your web server uh, uh, on different physical servers, you should use this one. But if you have everything on one server, you better use the SOC because it is, it is fast, but really, really little fast, but every, every bit helps. Um, Gzip, who uses Gzip in Joomla? Okay, even in uh, 1.5? <laughs> 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 um, it is good to, to have this. Um, what I did, uh, oh yeah, my testing procedure. First, I uh, went with the browser to the Joomla website. Uh, I pressed F5, refresh a couple of times, then I changed a configuration setting, and then I pressed again a couple of times. And the first time it was about three seconds, and then the second time it was about two and a half seconds. So it didn't improve much. However, I have to tell you something, a couple of she sheets on. Um, Joomla cache. This is really a performance game. Uh, Sometimes uh, when uh, my page uses 2.7 seconds and I uh, switch on uh, the progressive caching, it will go down to one and a half seconds. <coughs> so this is really powerful. However, this morning I heard that progressive caching is, is good if you have one user, but if you have multiple users, you better use the conservative caching. So I haven't tested with that, but I think I will change it to that. Um, Nginx, you can also uh, set the gzip uh, setting in your web server. And uh, you put this information in the configuration file of Nginx itself. However, if you look at the default uh, configuration setting, gzip is already on, and gzip is already disabled for Internet Explorer 6. And the rest I just added. This is uh, my performance game from uh, 1.447 to 1.436, so nada, nothing. Um, Nginx cache, 
Well, this one, um, maybe uh, because the GC was already on, maybe I should first switch it off in Joomla and in this setting. I should not use it in Joomla and this setting, but then test it again. But this was just a, a small test. Uh, cache, you also can do some caching in the web server itself. Like, uh, you open your configuration file again, and in this configuration file, you, you put some uh, things like, well, the PDFs, uh, the FLVs, etc. Well, uh, I want to cache them a year. And images, 14 days or so. It's just, uh, you can try stuff like this. Mm. On a regular Joomla website, I just used Joomla with uh, the brochure. It became just no nothing, no influence. Um, then I tried something else, APC. Uh, does anyone know what APC is? Yeah. yeah. It's called Alternative PHP Cache. And to install it, it's much more somewhat difficult because you have to install Peer on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, so you... Oh, sorry? Yeah, I didn't like, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I, I didn't like uh, a pair because it's really, really huge. But anyway, I used it. And I had to change some configuration, PHP, uh, some settings in the configuration put PHP, like, and I did it with these statements. And then with the sudo pekel install APC, you download the source code. You compile it on the fly and you install it all in one with a one command. And then I had some problems. I didn't, uh, APC didn't uh, turn up in my uh, configuration settings of uh, PHP. Please enter. So, so uh, uh, I will send you my uh, link to my sheet. So, uh, you will <laughs> yeah. So um, I had problems uh, getting this APC to run, and then after a while I, I discovered that I didn't have to restart Nginx, but also PHP FPM, and then it worked okay. So you have to use these statements, and this is the performance gain. The first time it was 1.8, and, and the second time it was 0.7. So this was really nice for me, and APC has something called uh, the APC uh, uh, opcode cache, oh, it doesn't say anything. It's just a sort of screen where you can uh, uh, look at your uh, uh, performance about how, how it caches. Um, I, I looked at some optimizing sh uh, scripts like uh, JCH or J, how do you pronounce it? J below or something? <laughs> Anyway, and also to uh, uh, Jerio script merge. Uh, these plugins will combine SS, uh, S, um, CSS or JavaScript. It can minify it and it can gzip it. You just can arrange it in the plugin. Um, I don't like plugins <laughs> because they um, you have more queries, so uh, you have some performance loss. So I prefer to do it manually, but these. These plugins are really nice if you are on shared hosting, but I was able to do it in another way. So um, when I tried GCH, I didn't get much performance. I mean, I already have APC running. I already have Joomla cache, and this didn't do much for my side. But in all on other sides, it might be working very well. The same with uh, this other application. It doesn't do much on my side. On other sides, it can be really uh, worth to, uh, to look at. So uh, there's something called Memcache. Anybody use Memcache? Okay, it's um, for the SQL queries to uh, cache those. Um, I uh, had to install it. I had to download and, co and compile uh, this uh, Memcache. And then I had to restart four servers to get it working. <laughs> um, it didn't work, but uh, today at uh, the two boys of uh, a side ground, I saw that they had a configuration setting in Joomla where they could set the, the caching and they had memcached and APC or some into. I didn't set those settings. Just maybe I didn't do it right. But anyway, in this case, it didn't uh, perform on my server. Overclocking. 
uh, the, the, the people here with the uh, Raspberry Pi. Can I see the hands again? Um, did you overclock the Raspberry Pi yet? No? Who wants to overclock the Raspberry Pi? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> you? <laughs> Maybe. Well, uh, you have to do it on your own risk. But I have here uh, uh, two small, uh, how do you, I don't know what the name, uh, cooling, st cooling stuff. Um, it might, might give uh, maybe a one degree Celsius performance gain. I don't think it, will, it works uh, very well, but you have to be careful with it. Um, well, the overclocking itself. Uh, I started Raspberry Config, and in Raspberry Config, I the default 700, I changed it to 1000, and I restarted my Raspberry Pi. Before, my um, uh, it was about this, and after the overclocking, after a couple of times, it became a tiny bit faster, but I had a feeling that it was a bit unstable, so I, I switched it back to 700, so I don't overclock now. <laughs> okay, um, some other thing, because I said, I think I said 10 ways to optimize it. Yeah, okay. Um, the last, last one, uh, cryogenics. Anyone know what cryogenics is? Yes? Oh yeah, of course. Well, this is cryogenics. Um, you can create super conductivity uh, in certain materials when you cool the, it down very, very, very fast. So I, I tried the fridge, but my wife, she didn't really like all the wires out of the fridge. <laughs> And, well, the Raspberry Pi, is, it is small, but uh, I had not enough room for beer anymore. And it was not cool enough, of course. So, you could choose helium or a liquid nitrogen, but I, I didn't know what to choose, so I, uh, I couldn't decide which, so I didn't try. Sorry? Okay. <laughs> That's just a joke, of course. Um, <laughs> performance for my Raspberry Pi. Well, every, every server and every uh, site uh, has its own configuration, so also uh, to, to optimize it. And I think that on my Raspberry Pi, uh, using FPM and then uh, the Unix socket, uh, the Joomla, and oh sorry, not progressive, but um, uh, the conservative cache, and also alt alternative cache, uh, where the, the, the main performance uh, gains. Um, when I connected my Raspberry Pi to the internet, I uh, uh, how do you say it? I, I, it scared me a bit. I didn't know, because I was using um, uh, uh, hosting providers on shared hosting that do all the stuff for me, so I didn't know how much uh, stuff would come to your website uh, to try things you don't want them to try. So, first of all, uh, it's you have to change the username and password for your Raspberry Pi, otherwise you are uh, messed up, you will be messed up anyway, and of course, backup. Um, you can, you should study your log files, and there are different kinds of log files. You can install something called LogWatch. However, if you have to use Raspberry Pi, there is no mail server in it. Uh, you can uh, install some stuff and only to, to only uh, let it send you uh, emails. I, I will just mention it. But my log files, for instance, this is uh, a log file from some time ago. It's a log file for my SSH server, um, all the login attempts. And failed password for root, failed password for root. Well, I don't have a root. I disabled my root. If I want to be root, I log in as my own user, which is P of P uh, Peter. And if I log in as my own user, then I can do uh, uh, su or sudo to become root. So uh, you I can log in directly as root. But all this stuff, well, you can do uh, who is. So I tried this address. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it was China. And it said, well, you can do uh, abuse reports, but you have to uh, detailed include detailed information in time zone GMT plus eight. So I have to convert everything. I don't want that. And I don't believe that, that those hosting companies will do anything uh, with it. But I heard that if it's a, if it's a, a university, 
you should do something because universities are um, usually very uh, well. They, they will handle, handle those abuse requests very well. Um, I blocked my SSS uh, root login. I told you already. And I installed a firewall. Mm. On Linux, you have a firewall called IP tables. If you do IP tables with an L, it will list all the rules in your IP tables. Well, here you don't have any rules, so it doesn't work. So I created a sort of a firewall uh, rules file. This is the information I put in it. I don't, uh, I don't discuss it. I found it on the internet. I used it and it works. Um, if you uh, want to activate it, you have to use uh, IP tables restore and then with this uh, smaller than arrow, uh, lower than arrow, I mean, you can uh, import this file I just created. Uh, if you do sudo uh, again, you see all those um, different rules. And the only thing, if you reboot your computer, you have to do it again. So I created a script, and in this script I said um, restore, just like I did before. And I put it in a if pre up D firewall, so it, if the Raspberry Pi is started, it will start this command and will, it will just load all the configuration settings for my firewall again. And this is, you have to uh, make it executable, otherwise it won't work. Um, it doesn't really, uh, sorry? Yeah. Yeah, but then I, I can't play with it when I'm here. When you're here, no. Yeah, so you are right. And I know someone who uses Raspberry Pis, about 30 in a row, uh, to monitoring services. And he has switches built on, real manual switches. Yeah. And if you switch it, uh, some software detects it, and if it's switched on, it will put your SSH on, and if it's switched off, it will yeah. just down. Yeah, yeah. Um, you will, be, you will be crazy if you have to manually uh, look at your log files all the time. So you can automate your firewall a bit. I don't know if you know uh, fill to ban This is an excellent script um, which will look at your log files on the fly and it will do perform some tasks. So if in uh, your log files uh, a, fil a filter, uh, something matches your filter and it uh, matches it uh, a couple of times, then you can put it on a block list for a couple of minutes, a couple of days. It depends on your uh, what you want yourself. The filters itself, uh, you can uh, use regex to create filters, and I will show you a filter. Um, first of all, to install filter ban, just the same procedure, and with uh, uh, if you look at the uh, filter ban lock, you can see things like. Uh, some IP address was banned for a temporary. The script kiddies, like these, um, you want to automate uh, fill to ban. Because wood wood, I didn't know what it was. It was on my uh, log files. So I, I checked the internet and I saw something. It is a sort of uh, a hacking script or something. So they check if this hacking script is present on your server. The same with all those setup.php files. They check if it's available, it's available, then they will use it to hack your website. So I want to get rid of all those setup mess. So what I did, I created a filter. Um, this filter I created, it's uh, I call it uh, no wood wood. Um, it's a fairly uh, easy filter with only one uh, uh, regex, regex um, file. It says something like if uh, if in log files I see wood wood or setup.php or wp login, because WordPress I don't use it, um, you will be banned. And in your uh, fail to ban jail.local, you configure how they should be banned. So here it says, the wood wood filter, uh, look at my log files of all the virtual servers, therefore uh, this asterisk. Um, and if, if, if someone just uses one time uh, wood wood, they will get be banned 600 seconds. 
I didn't bend them permanently because if I show you here this wood wood and one of you says wood wood, we have the same IP address. I, well, I can't reach my website anymore. Uh, you have to restart your fill to bend to in order to get it running. Um, other stuff, you can use an SSL, SSL certificate for an administrator because if you use your website and you use administrator, um, your password and your login will be on the internet unencrypted, just as plain text. Um, block your IP address, this is what I already told you. Uh, backup, of course, again, backup. And you could also consider passwordless login. Um, you have to create SSH uh, keys, and you put a public key on the, on the server and a private key in your, uh, on your own computer at a certain location. And then you can just log in without, uh, without, the, fa without the password. Uh, I wanted to do some geeky stuff. For instance, I have this webcam, and well, I, I got everything. I got everything running when I was at home. Uh, the webcam was running. Okay, uh, I had um, uh, how do you say it? A dongle, a Wi-Fi dongle. It was running okay at, as well. I was able to access it as a Wi-Fi Wi-Fi hotspot and to see my Joomla website with the webcam connected. Um, but just a couple of days before I came here, I just wanted to do all the t things to, to check it, and then it didn't work anymore. <laughs> so I can't uh, show it to you. Uh, I will just show you how to install a webcam. Um, I installed uh, a software called Motion, and with Motion uh, you are able to, uh, to, to look at the differences. Uh, I it looks at the differences in, in a picture, so it takes a picture, and it takes another picture, or it looks uh, if there are differences, and if there are differences, it takes another picture. So uh, if, there is no, uh, if there is nothing happening, um, it won't create uh, much files. I mean, it would be a waste of, uh, of uh, data transfer. This is what you have to do. Very important, if you have a firewall running, you should add your port to the firewall, otherwise you don't get access to your camera. And in your router, uh, in this uh, th this fellow, you have to uh, do port forwarding for the cell for the same port. Otherwise, people on the internet can access your uh, webcam. Uh, to display it, you go to your IP address. This is only uh, when I'm on my own network. If I'm uh, here, I should use uh, my PeterMartin.nl and then 8080. And on my website, uh, it says this. I don't know if it works if I'm here. Maybe I should. Just say PeterMartin.nl as well here. Um, I have no I, I, I have no time left, but or or have I? Yeah, I still have. I just told you that um, if you install the Raspberry Pi, everything uh, you don't have a mail server. So if you want to have the Joomla uh, send you emails, for instance, when you have the contact form, you should install something like Exim MTA. Uh, in order to uh, send emails, otherwise it doesn't work. And also, uh, if you use LogWatch, so you get uh, uh, of all the bad bad connections, you get an email with uh, those bad connections. You also have to use this one. So this is the Raspberry Pi. Um, maybe if there are no questions, I can tell you where what I what I use it for. Maybe or maybe are there are questions. Um, uh, you mean the picture with, uh, with my wife? Well, actually, the question is, is how are you hooking up that into the camera itself? Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, good question, man. Um, I'm just <laughs> using, yeah, but I, I have my, my, my uh, I have a Linux PC, but uh, you can use Windows or Apple, and you have to use the terminal or uh, uh, putty or the, uh, the shell, mm -hmm. and you just connect to your Raspberry Pi. Yeah, yeah, and then you can do all st all kind of stuff. I um. Well, the first time I I had my Raspberry Pi, I connected it to a television, and uh, I was on the sitting on the bank on the on the sofa, and my wife next to me, and I was doing SSH to my Raspberry Pi, and yeah, yeah, 
I have this Raspberry Pi, it's uh, now connected uh, there to the television, and um, I use uh, a Wi-Fi connection to get to my Raspberry Pi, and this is uh, the directory of the Raspberry Pi, look, LS, and then we got the directory. Uh, but the funny thing, I uh, did SSH from my Raspberry Pi to my office computer, and I did the same, and now I'm on, on my office computer, and my wife is looking like this, yeah, and. <laughs> So this is what I how I started out, but I found uh, 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 for me it's it's more an educational toy. I mean, uh, because of this, I now rent a VPS server somewhere uh, just to be able to run um, uh, Engine X and APC. Because uh, when you are a shared hosting, they have Apache. Apache is good, but now I think that Engine X uh, is better in some cases. So. It's uh, I learned about uh, Engine X, but also um, I have a server now at home, and it's running all the time. And I created some scripts to uh, keep track of a couple of websites I, I'm interested in. One of those is, uh, for instance, gold prices. I have a scraper script. It uses uh, the CLI, the so the command line interface, and I have to do PHP and the name of my script, and then the script will go to a, a website. And on this website, it will just take all the information. I have a sort of uh, a script that analyzes the information, and it puts all the information in the database. So I have in the database, I have a, a table field, I mean a field with the date, the time, uh, uh, the amount of gold, uh, and the gold price. So I can do, um, how do you say it? I can create graphs, and I, ca I can just analyze stuff. But also, there is a website in Holland and uh, yeah, they have uh, they have prices every day, and yeah, I just uh, index the prices with it um, because uh, you it, you can leave it on all the time. It's it's only three and a half watts. So th these are the purposes I am currently using, uh, and what I would like to use is uh, Open VPN because we are now here in this conference hall. Um, did you use uh, the web browser? Here or did you check your email? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you use TLS on your email? No. Yes. Oh, great. Um, if you don't use TLS, uh, it's a sort of encryption. Um, your password will just go on the internet here. I mean, on the on the Wi-Fi. Uh, everyone uh, can can li uh, listen to it. Um, the same goes with uh, HTTPS. I mean, with HTTP. If you use uh, HTTP to go to a website. You can log in for a customer in the administrator. Your password will be uh, plain text here on the network. But uh, if you don't have HTTPS on your uh, server, you can't encrypt it. But what you can do is um, you can build a connection from here to your home where you have a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the connection from here to home will be uh, 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 with SSL. And from home, it will be just HTTP without the, the uh, encryption. So this part is just encrypted. And from home, yeah, you believe your, your internet service provider is okay. So then uh, it's more, much more safe. So that's uh, what I want to use it for in the in the future. Can I ask a philosophical question? Yes. Um, basically, I never use it yet because I'm not a nerd. Um, you know, when I was young, I got a, a Sinclair ZX three or whatever. And yeah. Commodore 64. <laughs> yeah. All you got was a computer and a book that told you how to boot it up and how to write some basic code. Yeah. There was no, no internet, no examples of how to, all this kind of stuff. So you know, I learned coding because that's the only thing I could do with it. Whereas now with the Raspberry Pi, it's just such a cheap computer. You can get anything from the internet. Do you actually, you know, is it going to teach these kids to program? Because how is it any different to... Teach them how to build a server. Yeah, yeah, you can do that with, with any Linux box. It's just a cheap Linux box. Yeah. You know, is, it, is it really going to teach them coding and understanding how computers work? Depends the on their purpose because uh, a lot of people just buy Raspberry Pi because it, uh, they you can use it as a cheap uh, media center. You install XBMC and you can uh, watch movies on your television. Um, but you have people that they use it uh, to, 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 to use Scratch. Scratch is uh, uh, um, a programming language, but official programming language. Um, 
if you if you use a, 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 a normal computer, you don't want to mess up this normal computer. And with the Raspberry Pi, yeah, if if you mess up, you change the the SD card, you start over again. So I think uh, well, it, it depends on the people who are using it. But because uh, there is a lot of documentation, people just try sti start uh, tinkering with it. Not not hacking, but really yeah, just <coughs> trying stuff, and they learn uh, uh, new things just by trying. I mean. Uh, for me, uh, Engine X, it was uh, a revelation. I, I, if if I didn't have the Raspberry Pi, I maybe I today I would have heard about Engine X or. So what, yeah. what did you use your, your printer for or your Commodore? Um, well, first of all, um, I had a lot of games, so I played a lot of games on it. But I also uh, was very bad in languages. So what I did was I created some um, tutorial scripts, like uh, uh, what is computer in English or in German or whatever. So I had to type in all the words, the combinations. And I think I learned more by typing everything than <laughs> by the program I wrote. And the same, uh, I had a lot of tapes. And I had a, a, a book with all the, um, the games in it and where I had to, to, to fo fast forward my uh, tape streamer. Uh, and what I did was um, I created a program uh, where I was able, uh, with a database, and was able to just ask, where is this game? And I, uh, tape 14, uh, uh, side B, uh, uh, counter 200 or something. Um, the only thing was, uh, running this program uh, took me about seven minutes or so, so it was easy to look up. <laughs> but just because it was possible, yeah, you, you did it, and you lear I learned a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some, yeah, but it's 